We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloop Cast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you today, buddy? Hey, I'm doing all right. Um, Monday episode, we talked about NIL. Uh, we made some, you made some jokes at Michigan's expense. Um, what else did we do in the Monday episode? We had some fun. But uh, today, today we are uh, going over some recruiting. Ohio State had one of their first uh, camps for, for recruits to attend. Um, at the end of this camp, or at least, uh, well, we knew about it by the end of the camp. I'm sure it was, you know, it happened during the course of the camp. Uh, Ohio State offered seven new players seven new players into the recruiting um into their uh, uh they're not into the recruiting class i i almost said into the recruiting class and i tried to find a way to dig myself out of that and i couldn't find it not into the recruiting class they just into the offer list sure into the offer list there you go so now before before we get into specifically those seven players let's talk about the 2023 quarterback situation now Ohio State had a huge, huge win uh, rec uh, recruiting quarterbacks. But that's 2024. They got Rayola coming in 2024. Now, the, the, the problem you find yourself in if you're Ohio State is you have five-star quarterback in 2022, a five-star quarterback in 2024. You also had a five-star quarterback in 2021. Um but now you have no one in 2023 horrible problem yeah. to have. I know. Right. They're slacking. They're slacking. Jerry. It's a horrible pro problem to have. Um, yeah. The mailman lost my, my offer to Zeus. Um, so, but that, that, okay. So jokes aside, and it is a good problem to have. Um, it might be a bit hard to entice a 2023 quarterback to come in. Um, as far as like, a lot of the big names from the recruiting class, um, there a lot of them are going elsewhere. A lot, a lot of the big names who they had stealing the Baylor kid, though. Hey, Kabuto, you want to not steal my thunder, buddy? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so Heisek does have their eyes on a pair of quarterbacks who are currently committed elsewhere. One of them is Baylor. Kabuto. One of them is Baylor. Um, his name is Austin Novasad. Am I saying that right? Probably not. Um, he has been uh, committed to Baylor since December. Uh, he stands 6'3", uh, just under 200 pounds. Uh, he's uh, outside the top 300 uh, in the 24 seven sports composite ranking should be noted that the 24 seven sports proper ranking does like him significantly more than the composite basically go from 333 down to 220. It's a pretty big jump. Um, so uh, this one's, I think is looking good. Uh, he's one of the seven players to leave the camp, uh, with an offer. So, and then if you if you read like all of the all of the, you know, sort of post camp recruiting reporters. And by the way, um, Berm just let the uh, Letterman row. That's wild. That place is falling apart. Uh, I wish all the best to Berm. He's one of my favorites. Um, anyway, uh, I'll be canceling my on three. <laughs> I have an on three subscription. I'll be canceling it. Solidarity with Berm and Austin. Um, damn, where did Austin land? Nowhere yet that I'm aware of. He's still in that transfer portal. Yeah, I think so. Um, so that we know of. that we know of. So, yeah, I mean, he might have something, but just can't announce it yet. You know, just the way contracts work sometimes. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I'm feeling pretty good about this uh, a lot of his post camp recruiting reporting interviews have come out glowing absolutely glowing about the opportunity about sort of the stature the opportunity the 
his ability to sort of just just like in his moments he's had with Ryan Day, the things he's picked up, the things he's learned, uh, he is absolutely all over just glowing with Ohio State. Um, I'm starting to think this happens. And I think if you're Austin, then I wonder if you're thinking either one, I don't give a shit that I'm outside the top 300 and the other guys in the classes, the other guys in the class are all top 20 players, top 50 players. I don't care. I'm the best quarterback I've ever seen. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to compete. This guy has solid mechanics. He maybe doesn't have like the God given talents of some of the guys bookending him in the recruiting process, but he amazing mechanics. Uh, Maybe he thinks he's going to go in there. And surprise everybody. And you know what? Maybe he will. Um, he very well could. That being said, I, I think if you're if you're Ryan Day, I wonder if you're also doing the sales pitch of, you know, if you don't start here, you you know who I, else I coached, Joey Burrow. By the way, our quarter the the quarterback who just transferred here will be starting at Florida next year. It, it's I, I I feel like that has to be part of the sales pitch, right? Like, do you want to spend five years at Baylor, or do you want to spend two years at Ohio State, and then get your pick of a number of amazing schools? that will be offering you the second you hit the transfer portal because they know they coached under me, that you were coached under me. Yep. So if it's not, if, so it's not um, Austin. You who, think who was, Miller was, is the number two at Florida? Well, I guess we'll see. I'll be honest. I've not been following the the quarterback battle at Florida all that closely. Who, who, who else is Ohio State going after if, if um, Austin isn't willing to uh, to swap to Ohio State. Um, another kid they had in on the camp, uh, they did not offer him, not not as of yet, not that I'm aware of. A uh, kid by the name of Jax Leatherwood. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Who 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 went into the create a player? <laughs> this is a create a player name, right? J A X Leatherwood 66215. This is what you do when you go into creative player mode on NCAA, right? His name is Jax Leatherwood and he's 66. Why does his parents hate him? Well, Leatherwood's a surname. The 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 Jax um could we poach that quarterback from Akron? Um I don't know who you're talking about, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he is a uh, Jack Leatherwood is currently committed to the Nevada Wolfpack. Uh, so, I mean, again, Ohio State has not made an offer here yet, but. Eh, it's Nevada. Like. I, I don't I don't I don't mean to be a dick or nothing, but it's Nevada. So should they choose to pursue this, um, it would probably work out. Um, the rankings are not really in place yet for him. So he is at the very least um, underreported on. Uh, so you know we'll, we'll see what happens with Jax. But these were the two quarterbacks brought into the camp last week. So let's All get right. back into the offers. Where should we start, Kyle? So first one here, let's start with, uh, start with Jermaine Matthews. This is a kid that we've, we've, um, I believe we've mentioned as well as, uh, he's a top 10 Ohio kid, uh, based out of Cincinnati here. So obviously Cincinnati is a, um, a big target. So Tell us a little bit about Jamin Matthews. Jermaine Matthews uh, seemed to have been heading to Cincinnati. Um, 
This is another player. Uh, no, he is not from Taft. He is from Winton Woods. Uh, but but hold off on that Taft. I I have some I have some Taft news coming for you uh, after this player. Um. So he seems like a kid who was about to commit to Cincinnati on July fourth. That this this appears to have been what was happening. Um. Ohio State uh, needs defensive backs in this class. Um, he's technically marked as an athlete. Um, most places I see him talked about, talk about him as a cornerback. I think cover safety is also a potential landing spot for him. So Ohio State's looking for safeties. Um, and this is another player, by the way, where the 24 seven sports proper and the 24 seven sports composite differ by quite a lot. Um, where, so if you just look at Ohio, for example, he's top 10, according to 24 seven sports, but, uh, outside the top 15, according to the 24 seven sports composite. So you know, it, we have some differing opinions on, on what's happening here, uh, but it, he is an Ohio kid. I think it's also still early. Ohio kids are, are always um, low ranked to begin with. Uh, maybe 24 seven sports is just sort of catching up to that, you know, camp rules, slowing down the Ohio kids and maybe some of the other people who contribute to the composite uh, just aren't quite there yet. Um now, the question is, now that he has an Ohio State offer in his pocket, which, uh, you know, he said during interviews changes things, does he stick to that commitment date that he had planned out? Because that's a month away. Ohio kids are growers and not showers. I, you know what? You're not wrong. Uh, <laughs> I really don't want to like that. I'm really trying my best not to like that, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, Matthews um, says he's going to make another trip to Columbus before making his decision. He has not said that he's changing that July 4th date, but I wouldn't be surprised if he does. Um, again, I think this was a kid that was heading to Cincinnati. Then he got an Ohio State offer, and now he's got to think about some shit. I, yep. I think is where we're at right now. Yep. Absolutely not, Zeus. Absolutely not. All right. Let's talk about that uh the kid from Taft High School, also in Cincinnati. Uh Elias Rudolph. Uh he's a he's a defensive end, uh number six in the state of Ohio, rated as a four star defensive end. Yeah, uh all three of the players we talked about previously are 2023 players. Um we're we're venturing into 2024 territory now. Uh, as Kyle said, edge rusher from Cincinnati Taft specifically, uh, he's about the ranked, he's ranked about 200, uh, in, in most of the rankings. Um, as Kyle said, he's a four-star player, um, Cincinnati area early. You know, this is 20, we're, we're in 2024 territory now. So we, we aren't really talking about commitment dates. We aren't really talking about a lot of stuff, uh, in, in that respect, so uh, we're we're slow rolling this one. Elias Rudolph is definitely a name to bookmark, to put in the spreadsheet, to keep an eye on, save to your favorites, wh whatever it is you kids do to to track <laughs> uh, recruits. Uh, I feel this this has a lot of potential. Um, I feel like you very I want to say very likely, but when I say very likely, I mean very likely considering how early in the process we are, uh, very likely could be an Ohio state player. Mm -hmm. uh, another kid might be an Ohio state kid. Uh, we mentioned him be before uh, cousin of current tight end Cade Stover, Garrett Stover uh, from uh, Sunbury, Ohio. Yeah. Um, from big Walnut specifically. Uh, yes. As Kyle said, that name Stover, uh, does he also chase pigs? Uh, probably not in Sunbury. Isn't that, <laughs> isn't that Columbus suburb, Kyle? Am I, am I mistaken? Um, again, this is his cousin, not his brother. Um, 
So, you know, I don't know. There, there might be a difference in the household they grow up in. I, I don't know. But So I don't know if we're chasing pigs here. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, doesn't uh, this, go, this... he doesn't have to go too far from um, outside of Sunbury to to get into some farms. That That's literally true of every place in Ohio. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take it doesn't take long to find true. a farm. I don't care if you live in downtown Columbus. You're 20 minutes from a farm. No more than 30. Yeah, I, it depends upon traffic. <laughs> <laughs> um, another yeah, another uh, in-state prospect. Um, probably when it's all said and done, probably another top 10 kid from the state of Ohio. Uh, he's obviously got the right last name that it matters. You go play for the same team. Your cousin plays for uh, Stover was such like an Ohio state kid locked in. You can probably make a lot of assumptions that the family is that way too. Um, maybe a linebacker, pro- probably a linebacker, maybe a safety, um, probably a linebacker. I'm gonna say probably a linebacker. Um, 6'2", 200 pounds. Uh, right now, marked as an athlete. It's Like I said, it's super early in the process. Uh, you, you could probably go ahead and... Uh, I Do I want to say pencil or pen him into the class? Um, we're going to say we're going to say pen. Maybe not Sharpie. Okay. I'm, I'm, steal, I'm totally stealing that, by the way. I should need to stop doing that right now. Um, that's, that's someone else's bit. But... Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, again, for all the me- reasons I already mentioned, I think Garrett Stover's a name that you should 100% write down. Um, another name to really keep an eye out for as well. Again, another kid from the 2024 class, uh, defensive back Aaron Scott from Springfield High School. Yep, we're still in the 2024 territory here. Um, we will have another 2023 name bef- before we're done here. But um, Aaron Scott is still 2024, another in-state kid. Uh, he is from Springfield, Ohio. Um, again, we're, we're super early in the process here, so it's hard to say anything with a high level of certainty. Um, I... Uh, he's starting, he's starting to get the big offers. Um, a lot of his offers up until somewhat recently. Uh, and I think he, I think one of his first big offers started coming in May, uh, Michigan, Notre Dame. I guess we can start counting Cincinnati as a bigger offer, especially for in-state kids. Um, started coming in in about May. The, the star is just now rising on him. We don't necessarily have a ton of information, but again, Ohio State's desperate. Oh, that, that, I don't want to say it that way. Um, but Ohio State needs depth at defensive back. And this is, uh, again, a, a very talented, very raw yet. Very small yet, uh, 6'1", 160, but again, 2024 player, 2024 player. Uh, there's time to add, don't we all need more depth? Yeah, but, you know, Ohio State completely changed up their defensive scheme, and they have they went from three defensive backs on the field to five defensive backs on the field. Um, and yes, I know what you were trying to say, Kabuto. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, another another prospect to write down again. Top ten, top ten kid in the state. Um, one hundred percent. Keep an eye on Aaron Scott. Yeah, another kid to keep a name out of. Really, really starting to get a lot of attention uh, just recently. J- I mean, just recently within past week here, literally the last week. Offers from. Ohio State, Notre Dame, Indiana to go along with his Purdue. Um, uh, that would be Myland Graham from New Haven, Indiana. It's got a lot of attention, especially from Ohio State and Notre Dame recently. Uh, wide receiver, six foot, uh, 170 pounds. And you watch some of his tape, he is just lightning in a bottle. He is so, so quick. 
Yeah. Um, Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong here. Was his first big offer or maybe was it Ohio State? That doesn't happen too often, right? Uh, th this kid, you, you look at his rankings again, 2024. So with a grain of salt, 2024. Well, I'm going to get to the eighth grader. Don't worry about that. Um, 2024. Nothing in the 24-7 sports rankings. Nothing in the composite. Nothing in the proper rankings. And he just got an offer from Mr. Brian Hartline. I was, I, was, I was just going to say that. Now, when your main recruiter is Coach Brian Hartline. And, and he, he says, offered hey, you already. And he said, hey, hey, Mr. Graham. Hey, Mr. Graham. Here, here's this letter. We, we want you at Ohio State. How often does Ohio State beat Cincinnati to the punch <laughs> with a, with an offer? Um, no, no, I take that back. They did not beat Cincinnati to the punch with an offer. Ah, oh, well, uh, yeah. yeah, it looks like they, they offered him back in March. Darn. Or no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong person. That's, uh, hold on. We're talking about hold Mylon. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> I was looking at Kyle. That's my bad. Yeah, his his first offer, Kyle. His first offer, period, was from Brian Hartline. The guy who can get any wide receiver he wants in the country, apparently. And he offered the kid with no recruiting stars on, on no one's recruiting scope. First offer, Brian Hartline. Yeah. By the way, Indiana offered him two days later. <laughs> like, oh, shit. And, and Purdue, Purdue somehow um, made an offer as well, somewhere in there, too. Uh, I, uh, not according to the 24-7 sports official thing, but they could be. They could be behind. They Maybe they don't have it, it yet. It maybe. says there. It says there, it says Indiana, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Purdue. Yeah, but look at the look at the fucking check to the left. Does it say offer? Eh, all right, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, and the, and the last offers. kid, that, and, and the last and the last kid uh, that Ohio State offered um, was a 2023 kid, uh, Jalen Thompson, who's um, very heavily um, favored to go to. Uh, Michigan State. Uh, here's a kid from um, from Detroit, Michigan, just right there, right there in the backyard for Michigan State in Michigan. Uh, he's a the second best um, kid out of the state of Michigan and a top 200 uh, prospect in the 24/7 composite. Kyle, one more player we need to talk about. One more player we need to talk about. His name is Tyler Atkinson. We we mentioned him before in a previous episode. Have we? We have. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure we did. This is that eighth grader that we talked yeah. about that Ohio State offered. I think we I think we mentioned him before. I don't think we've talked about him before. Am I being, no. am I being obtuse? No, we, we, no we, we've mentioned about him because it was, it kind of eyeballed as like, oh, Ohio State made an offer to an eighth grader. What, what is this? What is this? So yeah, Tyler Atkinson was at the Ohio State uh, camp last week. And you know what? According, according to some reporters, then he, he might, he might be one of the, and I mean, it might be stretching it too, but he was, he was, he was one of the best, uh, he had one of the best, um, camps out of anybody there. I have heard. And again, maybe people are being whatever, but it doesn't affect LJ's tenure. The, 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 this child is in the eighth grade. It would be 
seven more that would be asking seven more seasons out of lj yeah um my guy this is class of 2026 by the way he's from loganville georgia this is not an in-state product um class of 2026 uh he is going to be a freshman in high school he literally just graduated junior high Literally just graduated junior high. Kid is 6'3", 190. Jeez. That was ridiculous as an eighth grader. 6'3". Imagine being a 60-something, a multimillionaire, wanting to retire, but adjusting your life based off of the whims of an eighth grader. (laughs) Welcome to recruiting. Um, There's no any things on this kid yet it's class of 2026 that no one's been ranked for the class of 2026 yet but it's a shower for sure that he is um as a football yeah. pro as a football prospect as a football prospect we are literally talking about someone who's not in high school yet so like okay funny jokes but seriously like uh. <laughs> um as a football prospect uh so yeah ohio state offered him back in may but he did but most noteworthy here is that he he came up and camped with ohio state as a as an eighth grader and i have heard i have heard that he was the best defensive end at the camp again maybe people are are this or that so if he were a sophomore the dick jokes would be more pal more palatable yes does that make does it make any of the jokes good in this context? No, it does not. But like it's a sliding scale that is going downhill. Um but yeah, the uh yeah, uh yeah, just just a guy to keep in mind. Um I have no idea. It's just it's it's too early to say anything about anything here. I have no idea what he's planning on doing, what but the fact that he's willing to come up to Columbus to do a to do just a camp is obviously huge. It's obviously huge. Um, there are some clips of him doing drills insane for his age. Yeah. Again, I have heard people say, and I don't I I have a hard time believing it, but I've heard people say it that he was the best defensive end at the camp. Uh, it just it kind of feels like the Jadavion Clowney 2.0 because that was a kid who had insane hype from minute mm. one. Um, I don't know. I I don't know. It's it's well we'll see. But this again, class of 2026, like <laughs> graduating high school for another four years. Let's not overdo it unfair regardless of his measurable sets yeah you're right um yeah but that's just kind of what recruiting is like you can't recruiting in general is just kind of gross i mean let's let's be honest um so let's not pull that thread too hard (laughs) because that's essentially what we're doing here is is it's none of it's good. None of it's good. If we're being super honest and if we're really and none of it, none of this is great, but it is what is the lifeblood of the Ohio state and all college football. Um, so we can't not talk about it, but yeah, all, all of, I kind of hate that recruiting's a thing. Uh, I kind of hate the, but it, I, I don't know what the alternative is because you can't do a draft. So I don't know. All right. Yeah. Um, anything else we want to talk about on the recruiting front, Kyle? Man, on the recruiting front, not, not really. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think that's it. I think, I think that's all we have. Draft would show you who the good coaches are. Can we have <laughs> recruit a host to replace Jared? No, no, you can't. Sorry. Um, 
I don't know if that's true or not. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not true. Um, a draft would not show you who the good coaches are. You, we think there's a lot of talent, but we think there's a lot of talent because all the talent gets concentrated in a few teams. If you took all of this talent and divided it evenly among 130 teams, then that doesn't show you who the best coach is. That just shows you like whose quarterback didn't get injured. That's it. That that's what you would learn. Mm -hmm. You would see who can develop kits. Yes and no. I mean, the raw, raw talent is what raw talent is. I, I want to something crazy like is it like 60% of five star recruits get drafted into the NFL? I don't know. It's just again, when it, it's kind of like with the NFL, sometimes the team who ends up winning the Super Bowl is the team who had the best luck with injuries. Just yeah. because the salary cap prevents you from having quantifiable depth. What's your question, Stuart? While Stuart's type, uh, when LJ retires, will we call off? Oh, I think you're trying to say fall. Fall off with the D line. Um, probably. I mean, it's just like he's one of the best to ever do it. And you take one of the best who's ever done it, you remove him, you're now worse. That That's, I don't know how else to say it. Mm -hmm. Does he have an understudy being groomed? Uh, no. Not to my knowledge. But I don't think you want an understudy being groomed. You want to just go steal the best defensive line coach from somewhere else. And if he's an LJ, you know, disciple, if it's someone, if LJ can help you poach someone, if LJ could make the first call and be like, hey, I'm out, you want this spot, it's great. Knowles is great. Day is great. Everything's great here. You know what I mean? And I'm not, and I'm not saying that who is best after Larry Johnson? You know, I could make a case for a few guys. Um, and I, I don't necessarily feel prepared to just name that right, right off the top of my head. Um, because I don't necessarily going after. Well, yeah, do it. Um, <laughs> whoever Georgia has. Um, the Texas A&M defensive line coach i don't necessarily just want to sometimes poaching i don't want to say this i don't think the best move necessarily i'm having trouble saying figuring out how i want to say this you just need to go get East Carolina seems to be developing D-line. And again, I know nothing about what's going on there, but I think that's the sort of thing you might look at first, right? Like, who's doing more with less? Um, I think that's probably your first look. Maybe not your first look, but it has to be among your first looks, right? So again, we could name some big-time guys who get big-time recruits and... But maybe there's a diamond in the rough that you can go get. Yeah. So I'm just, I, I don't, I'm not trying to name Larry Johnson's successor uh, when he's probably just a, another two years at Ohio State anyway. So it just, it kind of feels like an unnecessary exercise. Can you get Dion, Dion for a cornerback coach? No, I don't think you're getting Dion for corners.
All right. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, I think uh, Michigan's trying to do fi- is finally trying to do something to the likes of Ohio State's gold pants tradition. Oh, this is have you seen cringy. that? Oh my god! Anybody, anybody else see that? Anybody else see see the pictures that uh, Michigan's trying to do? Yeah, it's they have their own. It, quote it, it, it looks it looks like something. It looks like something that a junior high kid did in art class. I think that's generous. Yeah, it's like a dog tag. It's it's the front of their helmet, and it has the game, and they're and they're so nice to put the Ohio State logo in the back of it. I mean, <laughs> that's nice of them to put the logo back of, and even even if it has like yellow markings in front of it, but yeah, it's nice of them that they, they were kind enough to put the Ohio State logo on on part on part of that. You don't see Ohio State doing that on on the gold the gold pants, but I saw somebody in the comments here. I think it's like the first one. They missed a great chance here to give your players khaki pants for winning. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that would that would lose all meaning when Harbaugh isn't the coach in twenty twenty four. 2024, 2023. Um, <laughs> Hot dog pants. <laughs> my God, you want to talk about rent free. And I, I fucking hate rent free. It's just like the lazy, it's like the lazy response. It's the lazy, oh, oh, you're talking about my prayer, rent free, living in, I hate, I hate, it's a lazy, out, overplayed response. But literally rent free. Right on your goddamn <laughs> wear our logo around your neck. That's right. By the way, Ohio State should sue. They can't sue. It's yeah. not being sold. Right, that's it. That's it. That's all I got for, for Kyle's corner. All right. Um, Kyle, Kyle's corner. This uh, this particular Kyle's corner, fun. I liked it. This, this was a good Kyle's corner. Good. I'm, right. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, if you heard me talk about it during the Monday episode, I'm very excited to announce the return of playing to Vapors. I, I say that like this is an official announcement, like I have any fucking authority to do any. But I, I went on a long rant uh, on the Monday episode. And uh, you can go listen to that if you want. But just know that uh, playing to Vapors are back. Uh, I'm very excited about it. They have a new EP coming out. They don't have songs for that EP yet, so I can't play it yet, unfortunately. Um, but I, I, I probably will. What happened to Pray for Sleep? Um, they're still around, I think. I think they released something new recently, actually. Uh, I might play them next week. Um, I think they I think they just released something. Maybe it was not new music. Maybe it was a new video or something, I, if I remember correctly. Um, but we're doing Playing to Vapors today. So uh, once again, like like on Monday, we will be ending today's show with some playing to vapors. Um, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local music. Drink local music. I seriously just said that. Drink local beer. Listen to local music. And of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is playing to vapors. <laughs>